Hi, the Pragmatic Luther again. Today, I want to show you how to glue a guitar top or glue a guitar back together. Um, I want you to keep in mind that I may sound like I'm poking fun at or disapproving of suppliers or companies that sell tools. It's not that I disapprove of them. It's just that as a Pragmatic Luther, for those who are uh, inexperienced, beginning, or even those who are experienced, there's a lot of ways you can accomplish these tasks with simple devices, simple tools and materials, and you don't need to always put money in their pockets. And as I will always uh, promote, if you want to be a guitar maker, you got to become some sort of a jig and fixture and tool maker. So let's get started. Let's start with devices that you need to do this. I'm going to show you two different ones, this one and this one, which is a temporary rig on my bench. You could do either one or both. This is just a frame made up out of, I don't know, pieces of two by two. These happen to be, believe it or not, purple heart, purple heart sapwood scraps that I got out of pallets. And they're fastened together with some scraps of Luan. These are separated by enough distance so that I can glue up uh, about a 22 inch top or back if I need something that long. On one side of each of these members is this cleat. Uh, these are easy to get. They're available in any uh, hardware store or a big box store. And you'll need one of those for each of these members. These are there so that you can tie things down tight and release them quickly at any time. You'll need some sash cord. Um, this is, I'd say, about an eighth of an inch in diameter. Uh, a similar cord or rope would do it. If the rope is too heavy, it doesn't seem to work well in the cleats. And if you use something as fine as Mason's twine, uh, you'll practically cut your finger off trying to get it down tight. So you just need to find some kind of a, a cord and it needs to be durable too. And each one of these is, if I can get that back out of the way, each one of these is just fastened down with a screw and a washer to hold it tight makes it easy and simple, real cheap. Over here, I have these just pine wedges. I don't know what those angles are. I'm gonna guess it, I don't know what, 15 to 18 degrees. They need to be a gentle slope so that they'll drive in tight. If the angle is too steep, uh, it will tend to make the wedges slide backwards and uh, fail to maintain uh, tension on the rope. And obviously, if the angle is too low, you'll drive them all the way through the device uh, before they come up to tension. But it's as simple as that, and I'll show you how this is used in just the next segment or two. I'm going to do a dry demonstration of gluing up this back. This happens to be a piece of white ash, and it's quite large, so this would be as if I was gluing up a, uh, a jumbo instrument or something. So this presupposes, of course, that you have jointed or hand planed or sanded or whatever you do to get those edges perfectly straight and matched. And if there's any uh, strips that you're going to put in in the joint, in here for example, those are prepared and you're ready to do this. In order to just provide a little bit of protection for the jig or the, the gluing device, I just slap a piece of wax paper over where the glue joint is going to be. So I've got my pieces ready and I've put glue on them. When I do that, I like to rub that joint just a little bit, like so. Just rock it back and forth because it helps rub the glue into the joint. And you should put a little glue on every surface. Don't trust the glue to just soak into an opposite dry surface. So I put those on there and I take my ropes one at a time. It doesn't matter which one you start with. And I bring it up over the device and hook it over that, that cleat, excuse me, cleat member, whatever you want to call it. And I'm putting some tension on it holding that with my thumb and I'm wrapping around my cleat on the back side. And I'll show you a close up of that. 
in the next segment. So here's the routing of that rope once more and a quick uh, close-up of the knot that you tie. See if I can keep my arms out of the way. But you're going to go across your top or your back and form a figure eight. Now, quite often this edge is going to come out over this cleat, which is okay. Uh, but no matter what it does, I like to get right behind that edge. Can you see that okay? And get into the cleat from the back side because it puts more abrupt pressure right here, which I think is helpful. And then around the cleat, you're gonna tie a figure eight. And you don't need a whole bunch of them, but then when you're ready to tie it off, you form a loop in the rope put it over the cleat so that it traps itself and draw it down tight. Just that simple. So my sections are glued. I've got everything down. I've got some wax paper underneath and I tie it off. Remember, figure eight. As soon as you have your lines tied down tightly, you introduce the wedges. I like to start my wedges on the center. And the reason I have four members on this is because I want to wedge over each one. I suppose you could do three, you could do four, whatever you want. I don't think there's any reason for more than four. So you slip the wedge in. You don't need hammers and mallets. You just push it up tight. And if your loop isn't tight enough, just go back, tie it again. You can, you can readjust anytime you need to. So there we are. We have all four of those in. This is not a new device. This is an ancient technique. I did not invent this. And as I mentioned, you can buy these elsewhere at some supplier's place for high prices. But why buy when you can save yourself some money and make the tooling yourself and then spend your money on spruce and wood you need to actually make the guitar. Another device you could make up to glue these panels up is this just temporary rig like this. Now you could make this temporary or you could make this a permanent tool in your shop. I'm fortunate I have these heavy steel rails that I got many, many years ago from a local manufacturer. But you could use, instead of these, just some sturdy pieces of hardwood. You just need to make sure that the working edges are nicely straight. Just make sure they're jointed or hand planed and you want them good and straight. So I set this thing up. I just clamp these to, this is an auxiliary bench that I have at right angles off my main bench. Wax paper in the middle where the glue joint is. Don't want to get glue all over the bench if we don't really have to. And you can see that I have set these two rails at an angle. I've done that for a reason and this is really simple. That's what makes this thing so beautiful. I'm going to take the halves of my top and having them all prepared of course, jointed and the edges made to fit properly and we've put glue on them and rubbed that in and all but the question now is at what angle well it's really easy i make this tapered wedge this one's out of beach i've had it for years use it again and again and it's at an acute angle so that it will apply a force to that joint 
between those rails. And the beauty of setting this up is that when this rail is put down, all you need to do is set up the halves of your top or your back, put the wedge in it, and bring this rail up to it and clamp it down. Now you could put this whole thing on a sheet of MDF or a sheet of plywood if it's good and flat, and you could screw these rails down. And if you were to do that, uh, you could screw them every two, three, four inches, and they wouldn't need to be this heavy and stiff. So you could do the same thing with lighter materials, and you'd have that as a permanent fixture in your shop. So this is really a great way to do this, and it's simple. So this is dry, of course. We're not going to glue this up right now. But once the glue is in, you see I just drive that wedge. Now I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on it right away because there is, I suppose, the danger of this lifting. We don't want that to happen. So just before I put a lot of pressure on it, I'm going to lay a piece of wax paper over that and I'm going to take a scrap of wood long enough to do the job. And if you can see, this is not perfectly straight. And on this side where my fingers are wiggling, that is convex. I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm going to put that right over that joint and I'm going to put a clamp on each end and I'm not going to squeeze it down real tight. I'm just going to get it down tight enough to keep that from springing up. And I don't really need a mallet, but I suppose you could tap it a little bit. If I just push that together with my hands, and I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on that right now, and that's still not popping up, which also tells me that joint's quite nice. It's nicely prepared. But that's all there is to that. You let that set for two or three hours, and then take it out, give the glue time to dry for a few more hours, scrape off the excess that might be in the joint, and you got it made. It's an easy one to do. So what if you have a panel to glue up that does not have straight edges, as in this piece of walnut? Well, I used my same setup, and I could do that even if this region was only a single point, as if it was arched for the back. Um, so this still works. But what about the waist and the upper belt? Well, I've just put a couple of short wedges in here, and these work really well. You have to be careful that you don't drive this wedge backwards, but if you get these to oppose one another, that'll pull that upper belt in there. And look at over here. If you make a, a circle that is not really a circle, this is one circle drill or cut, excuse me, from two different centers so that it's kind of eccentric. And you can just put that in there and tighten that up with your fingers. And that'll be plenty tight to put clamping pressure on that. And then the same technique, your wax paper and your bar over the top if you need to keep that pushed down. Just that simple. There's always a way to do this. You just get a little creative. And if you make stuff like this up, get a box somewhere, keep these things around because you'll use them from time to time. They'll come in real handy all over the shop. watching. I hope what I've shown you today is helpful, especially to those of you who might be just starting building or have only built once or twice and need some, you know, helpful hints. Um, it should be noted that I am not subsidized by any companies or entities of any kind. I make no money in what I do. Um, my attitudes and my practices are born out of my experience and my own background, 
and the things that I've learned in the past. I am the pragmatic Luther. Let's face it, that means I'm cheap. So I make a lot of tools and I find ways to do things so that I don't have to put my money in the pockets of suppliers and uh, tool making companies and that sort of thing all the time. And I encourage other people to do the same thing. I hope you put a like on this video and I hope maybe you'll subscribe to my channel. Look forward to some more in the future. Thanks again. This is Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luther at Ledoux Guitars.